Well, good morning, everybody, once again. Um, I'm just stalling for time because Leslie had to go run. Yeah, she's back upstairs. She's getting her exercise in this morning. Well, uh, thank you for being the brave souls to be here this morning. As you can tell, our mask mandate has had an effect. Uh, so here we are, the new normal. Okay, well, it looks like everybody who is here is um, well known to all of us. So, no new people here this morning because so I don't have to introduce myself. Um, hi, Zoo. Um, welcome to all of you who are on Zoom. Thanks for joining us. Okay, we are um, ready to move forward. So at this time I'm going to ask um, Christy to light the Christ candle. And we welcome Kelly Garmer as our musician this morning. Hi. I just wanted to extend my welcome as well to all of you dear ones in the sanctuary and to our friends on Zoom from near and far. It means a lot to see your faces and your eyes, and I know that, that there's a warm heart and a smile under those masks. So thank you for being here. If you have a candle at home, those of you on Zoom, why don't you get it now and you can light it as we light our candle here in the sanctuary. In the beginning was the one, the one presence of the undivided and unmanifest pure spirit of life, light, and love. In its generosity, it shared itself, its consciousness, in the visible form of creation. <coughs> we acknowledge this presence within us and as us, as the creative energy of the divine feminine and masculine, expressing in all our giftedness and creativity. We acknowledge this presence in our companion, Mother Earth, and in all sentient <coughs> beings. This universal presence in everything we call the Christ. We light our candles as a visible reminder of the Christ presence, expressing in, as, and through us in each present now moment. It is the truth. Let us embrace it. And now we have beautiful Kelly, who's going to sing our opening song. So let's stand and sing together.
right, well, thank you. You can sit down after that now. You kept your breath. <laughs> well, that seems appropriate. I do what gives me life. That certainly means something that is probably foremost on our minds these days. It's, what do I have to do to give me life and to stay alive? So, I'm uh, going to start off this morning. Our invocation always sets sort of the mood or the theme. And again, I'm taking something from Stephen Perel. And he says, All you need to do to be in your divine power is to be aware of the life force energy within you. Now that Kelly has helped us to get in touch with that life force, I'm going to invite us to pause, just to breathe deeply and feel that energy flowing through our bodies. Perhaps you can feel it running on your skin, through your veins up and down your spine, through your chakras. Feel into it and let the energy engulf your awareness. Think and set intentions from this space. This is how to embody more soul and create a more soulful reality. What does our soul wish to express? For us individually, today, what does our soul wish to express for us collectively? What does it wish to birth as a new humanity? What might that look like? And we always come to that as infinite love, of course. Because we are love, we are loved, and we are lovable, always. And today we're going to go further in exploring these questions in that invocation as to what spirit wishes to express in, as, and through each one of us at this time on the planet. And so at this time, particularly, we're going to step into our power. We're stepping into power of spirit that resides within us to intend certain things. And we have a collective time of knowing and sharing for one another, where we open not to what we already know, but what we are about to know for each other. We're opening to that bigger understanding of things. And so we pray again this morning for the following people. Knowing that this is a powerful thing that we're doing. Again, it's about the energy, stepping into the energy, extending that energy of love and healing. So we pray for Sean Bartlett, Bob Castro, Joan Oliver, Barbara McCarthy, Christy Souza. Dale Frank, Andy and Karen Holman, Charlie and Will McBride, Geraldine Wood, Melody Jewell, Kathleen McIntyre and her mom Eve, Dar Vanata, Amy, Denise Mazzetti and family, for Angela and Greg, for Bernie Astazana, who passed yesterday for special intention for a family that have contacted us, 
for Tyler and for his family, for Carolyn Capello, Cynthia Robertson, Howard, Howard Ebersole, for Rhonda, Aaron Robbins, and Paul Spoto. And so we know each one of them to be much greater than whatever conditions or experiences they're experiencing right now. If you'd like to add any names out loud, please do so at this time. And so we pray together, there is only one presence and one power, active as the universe and as our lives, the all-loving goodness of God and all is and so at this time, Kelly has some special music for us. Please join in.
no cloud in our lives can dim our divine light within. And from the Bible, John 1, 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Good to remember. So let's move together into our meditation time. So let's settle, just settle really comfortably in your chair. Close the eyes and enter that quiet place within. Take several slow, deep breaths. And follow the breath with your attention all the way down to the belly. Allowing the belly to relax and release any tension or tightness. And follow the breath out as it exits the lung through the nose. And sense how your essence expands to fill the room. All thoughts of COVID aside, truly, we are connected. Everything and everyone through the breath. California Native people assert that even the rocks and the planet herself breathe. Just very, very slowly. So imagine yourself lying on a large, flat, granite rock by the river. Feel your heart and your breath come into harmony with the river, the stone, the very heartbeat of the earth. Imagine your arms stretching out. And you're bending your knees up to place your bare feet flat on the granite rock. You're completely open, suspended in that silken moment. Focus on your feet and allow them to become more alive, to become like super sensitive sensors as they begin to feel the pulsations of the Earth's heartbeat. The rhythmic pulsing and bursts of her love that penetrate the river, the stone, the very fabric of our earth and the universe. And you raise your hands to the sun and the sky, open your heart and invoke the goodness and harmony of the earth. Divine Mother, beautiful Gaia, spirit of harmony, wisdom, and peace. We ask for clear vision and purpose aligned with your highest good. Flow into our hands, our hearts, and our bellies as showers of sparkling light and bliss. With gratitude, we receive 
your pure essence rushing in like clear, cool mountain water, washing us clean of worries, cares, and concerns. Now imagine you are floating on a golden, timeless raft crafted from her radiant golden love. Feel yourself and your magic raft expand out to the sides of the earth out to the size of our spiral galaxy, out beyond all stars and galaxies, out to the farthest reaches of the universe, and rest there a while floating in the mind of God. From this expanded perspective as the universe, you, me, humanity, and the earth are only perceptible through our consciousness. We can discern from this cosmic viewpoint that our consciousness, our intentions, and our actions are critical to the evolution and survival of our tiny blue orb known as Earth, and perhaps to the future of humanity as well. Seeing this, Knowing this, each heart must decide how we can assist Earth's and our own evolutionary process. So, with a deep breath out, we allow our golden raft to return to Earth-sized dimensions and we feel our bodies securely seated in the chair as we move together into the set of questions that Reverend Jerry crafted for us, sensing that in our deliberations, we have the full support of Divine Mother, Father, Cosmic Christed Presence, surrounding us, ever available. And so it is. Amen. It's staying connected with this energy. Let us ponder the following First of all, a quote from my talk last Sunday. The emergence evokes the question of what kinds of we we can become. Into what could we evolve if we open ourselves up to new ways of working together, living, and acting together? What shape could this new we take? 
What emergent capacities could we develop that make us bigger than the sum of our parts? And so we open ourselves now to spirit to give us some new thoughts, some different thoughts. <clears throat> 